Now, before we get into the details, let's start with some of the lingo so we get a better understanding of how things are connected. Let's start with the simplest of all, resolution. So what resolution actually is, it's the dimensions of your image. So you have the height and you have the width, and this is your resolution. So the most commonly seen right now are Full HD, also known as 1080p, Ultra HD, which is also known as 4K. The resolutions for these two respectively are 1920 by 1080 and for Ultra HD is 3840 by 2160. Okay, so what this means is that this amount of pixels when you multiply these two numbers is what one frame or one image from your video actually contains in terms of data. Now, usually this would imply that the more data you have, this means better quality of the image. You can assume this for now, but this is not necessarily true. The reason is because most of the data quality will depend on the capturing, whether the camera with, with which it was recorded actually recorded that much data in the first place. Meaning, if you take, for example, a cell phone with a small camera, which has 60 megapixels, and then you take a DSLR as an example, which has 20 megapixels, right? Now, the thing is that the smaller sensor on the phone will capture much less light than the large one on the DSLR, even though it will record more pixels per image because of the 60 megapixels, it will be bigger than what the image for the DSLR will be, but the quality of the recorded content because of the bigger light absorption from the larger sensor, sensor from the DSLR will be better. So for now, this is still true, but having this in mind for the rest of the tutorial, let's assume that bigger resolution means better quality. Okay, so that's where we end with resolution. Okay, let's clear the board. Now, frame rate. Frame rate is the number of images you see per one second of your video. Okay, so most of the TV is in 24 frames per second, so also known as FPS. Some videos, maybe on YouTube mostly, you will see recorded with 30 frames per second. And nowadays you can see also 60 frames per second and greater. Okay, all this means is that for one second of video, you get displayed 24 images with size being your resolution. Okay, so that's frame rate. And this is how video is essentially done. Okay, codec. So Codec is very often confused with the container. So let me explain this. So codec is the actual representation of your images in zeros and ones. And let's take, for example, one image, which is you have a sun, you have a tree. And the way this is recorded on your hard drive will be in zeros and ones. Now, how this is represented is essentially your codec, because what a codec does is it encodes and decodes. So the process of converting the image into zeros and ones is called encoding. And when you convert it back from zeros and ones, it's called decoding. All right now, that being said, you have different ways of representing the same information in terms of zeros and ones. And this is a very crucial piece because nowadays you have this proliferation of different codecs and different formats because different platforms and technologies use uh, do it differently. So some example codecs of this uh, are AV1, then you also have AVC, H-E-F-C, 
and let's say VP9. Okay, so these are all different codecs that you can use either each of this, these to represent your sun and tree into zeros and ones. Okay, this will play a crucial part once we start talking about adaptive bitrate. Now, for now, this is a codec. Now, the thing we oops, uh, let's clear this out. Thing we need to kind of understand is how the container relates to the whole thing. Now, container and codec are often confused because the container contains the extension. You might have seen an extension of files such as mp4 or .avi and so forth. Now, the container is the actual kind of encapsulation around your video, your audio, subtitles, and so forth, okay? So your video is your encoded representation of your imageries. Your audio could be of a different type. It's completely independent. If you've ever seen a video that has audio out of sync, now you know why. And subtitles, you can have, let's say, different languages you can enable that come together. So this container can have an extension MP4 and it does not mean that it has only one type of codec. It could have different types of codecs inside. Whenever your media player starts playing this, it will actually figure out, okay, this is encoded with XYZ. I'm going to use this to play the video. So this is the container. Again, the container encapsulates the encoded video. So it is different from the codec. Okay. And finally, bitrate. Now, bitrate is essentially the amount of data per one second of your video. So let's say for one second, my video has 300 megabytes of data. This is an extreme case maybe at this time, but just for the sake of the example. So how do you end up here? Well, let's say that your bitrate is a function of your resolution so how big your images are frame rate so i'm going to represent this as fps and your length of the video how long is it and then divided by how well this is actually encoded and compressed in terms of zeros and ones on your hard drive so you want higher resolution because it means better quality. You want higher FPS because you want to make it look natural, not have it as a stop motion picture. And length, obviously, depending on the type of video you do. But you want also a very efficient codec so that the amount of zeros and ones that gets recorded is, is as small as possible. Because when we talk about sending video over the web, you want the smallest footprint so people who don't have a fast internet can download it at a reasonable speed or actually you download content to be played faster than what you're currently watching or at the rate of which you're watching okay so this covers bitrate and with this we are essentially done with our lingo